Hi there, and welcome to St. Thomas Aquinas for everyone. I'm Dave Palmer, and we are going to be talking in this video about St. Thomas Aquinas and the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception, which many people often say Thomas got it wrong. He was wrong in the Summa. I'm going to argue in this video that he didn't get it wrong. It wasn't as fine-tuned as the later doctrine would describe, but I don't think anything he said in the Summa about the Immaculate Conception was technically wrong, and so we will be digging into that as we get closer. Of course, it is a dogma of the Church that the Blessed Virgin Mary, uh, from the moment of her conception, uh, was uh, sanctified. It, she did not have um, original sin or any of the the effects of original sin, right? We know that that's the, do the doctrine. What did Thomas teach in the Summa, and you know, what did he get wrong, if anything? Let's let's kind of dig into that. This is the doctrine, okay? It was ineff Ineffabilis Deus, December 8th of 1854, and this is why we celebrate the Immaculate Conception on December 8th every year. Pius IX pronounced and defined that the Blessed Virgin Mary, and the wording here is very important, okay? In the first instance of her conception, by a singular privilege and grace granted by God in view of the merits of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the human race, was preserved, exempt from all stain of original sin. Every single word in that is really important for reasons that we're going to explain, but that's the big line from his encyclical where he defined the Immaculate Conception. Pay attention to the date, 1854. Remember, Thomas lived in the 1200s. He died around 1274, 1275, and so this was a good, you know, almost 600 years later after Thomas had died. So this had to percolate for, for quite some time. Now, the other thing you need to understand is the connection between the dogma, 1854, and then also Our Lady's appearing to St. Bernadette Subaru, February 11th through July 16th of 1858. This is where, among many other things, Our Lady said, I am the Immaculate Conception. So it's almost like the dogma, the, the infallible dogma is proclaimed by Pius IX in 1854 on December 8th, and then we've got you know, four years later, not even that long, the, Our Lady appearing to St. Bernadette and saying, I am the Immaculate Conception. So confirming what the Pope had already infallibly taught, right? So that, that that's kind of significant. Now, the, there are two articles in the Summa that I'm going to talk about. And again, I'm going to explain why I don't think Thomas got this wrong, okay? And then how it, it later was uh, better fine-tuned. So in the third part of the Summa, Tertia Pars, question 27, article 1, Thomas asks whether the Blessed Virgin Mary was sanctified before her birth from the womb. Now, anybody would say, yes, of course she was, okay, because it was at the moment of, of her conception when she was uh, formed in the womb that she was, uh, was uh, released of the stain of original sin and sanctified, right? So that's certainly before her birth. So Thomas says, nothing is handed down in the canonical scriptures concerning the sanctification of the Blessed Mary as to her being sanctified in the womb. Indeed, they do not even mention her birth. But as Augustine in his tract on the Assumption of the Virgin argues with reason, since her body was assumed into heaven, and yet scripture does not relate this, uh, so it may be reasonably argued that she was sanctified in the womb. For it is reasonable to believe that she, who brought forth the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, received greater privileges of grace than all others. Hence we read in Luke chapter 1, verse 28, that the angel addressed her in the words, Hail, full of grace. Okay, so he's on to something here, and he's right. Moreover, it is to be observed that it was granted by way of privilege to others to be sanctified in the womb, for instance, to Jeremiah, to whom it was said, uh, Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee. And again, to John the Baptist, of whom it is written, He shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. So Thomas here is saying, well, if it was good enough for Jeremiah, if it was good enough for John the Baptist, then certainly it would be good enough for the mother of God, the mother of Jesus Christ, right? It is therefore with reason that we believe the Blessed Virgin to have been sanctified before coming, um, being born from the womb. So nobody would disagree with this, okay? She definitely was sanctified before she was born, right? But Thomas doesn't identify exactly when she was sanctified. It was just sometime in the womb, right? Okay, so, so far, so good. 
Then he goes on in the next article. Article 2 says was it, whether the Blessed Virgin Mary was sanctified before animation. Now, animation is when life begins. That's when you know conception happens, right? So the dogma of the Catholic Church says that it was at the moment of conception. And this is where it gets to be kind of fine-tuned. So the answer to this question that Thomas is asking would be no, because it wasn't before animation. It was at the moment of animation, at the moment of conception. So see how Thomas answers here. By the way, this is Duns Scotus, okay? He was a Franciscan priest who lived from 1266 to 1308. So he only crossed over with Thomas about 10 years because Thomas died around um, 1274, uh, 75, right? So they probably didn't know each other. But he's the one that later fine-tuned this. And again, it took 500 years before the dogma by Pius IX, but he's the one who came up with the idea and said, okay, if it wasn't before animation, but it's in the womb, you know, for reasons that Thomas had a problem with, which we'll explain, how about if it happened at the moment of conception? That was the, the great contribution of Duns Scotus. Interestingly, Duns Scotus is the guy who they named the dunce cap after, okay? <laughs> Look what he gets, okay? He comes up with the, 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 the reasoning behind this very, very important dogma and they, they named the dunce cap after Duns Scotus. Isn't that crazy? Okay, so um, Thomas says, the sanctification of the Blessed Virgin cannot be understood as having taken place before animation. Okay, that's true for two reasons. First, because the sanctification of which we are speaking is nothing but the cleansing from original sin, for sanctification is a perfect cleansing. Okay, we're all good with that, as Dionysius says. Now, sin cannot be taken away except by grace. True statement. The subject of which is the rational creature alone. Therefore, before the infusion of the rational soul, the Blessed Virgin was not sanctified. Okay, before, you know, we have a human being and conception, you don't have a, you don't have a rational creature. And so that creature cannot be sanctified because it's not rational. It's not, it's not subject to sanctification because it's not subject to sin. Okay, nobody would disagree with this. This is right. Secondly, because since the rational creature alone can be the subject of sin, before the infusion of the rational soul, the offspring conceived is not liable to sin. Okay? You can't sin, you know, you're, you don't, you're not even a, a human being yet. And thus, in whatever manner the Blessed Virgin would have been sanctified before animation, she could never have incurred the stain of original sin. All right? She, again, we all agree with this. Before conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, she was not subject to sin because she was not yet a human being, so she couldn't have been stained with original sin yet, right? And thus, she would not have needed redemption and salvation, which is by Christ, of whom it is written, he shall save his people from their sins. But this is unfitting, though, implying that Christ is not the Savior of all men, and he is called, uh, as he is called in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. It remains, therefore, that the Blessed Virgin Mary was sanctified after animation. Now, this is the only sentence that I think Thomas got wrong in all of this. He says after animation because we need conception, we need a rational creature in order to be subject to sin and to be, uh, you know, subject to, to sanctification, right? So if you're going to make any, if you're going to nitpick Thomas, that last sentence, okay, it wasn't after animation, it was at the moment of animation. And that was the contribution, as I mentioned, of Duns Scotus. He came along uh, after Thomas and said, hey, how about if it wasn't before, it wasn't after, it was right at the moment. And the church said, yeah, that's right. Interesting, though, that it took 500 years before Pius IX in 1854 said, okay, um, this, this is the dogma. A lot of reasons for that, but I won't get into it, okay? So that is why I don't think Thomas really was wrong about the Immaculate Conception. He wasn't entirely right, but I think based on the information that he had at the time in the 13th century, uh, he did pretty well, okay? Uh, let me know if you agree or disagree. Get the conversation going. Thank you for watching. God bless you, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.